presentation for the afternoon is on the Jet Filter Systems 21st Century. We pulled the watering and erosion control solutions. And giving the presentation today is uh, David Heilman. He's the CEO at Jet Filter Systems. So I'm going to talk to you today about uh, weep holes, bringing the weep hole into the 21st century with maintainable weep hole drains. And for some of you, this is a new concept, and you think, well, what, what's a maintainable weep hole drain? So yesterday, uh, George said, there's not enough money to do everything you need to do. And you need to find simple solutions, cost-effective solutions, innovative solutions to your real-world problems that you can implement. And my goal today is to introduce you to one that it, it fills that category. And I want to make sure that this is one of those three that you take home back with you to show and to implement. So when you think of uh, retaining wall failures, and we, we had the retaining wall discussion yesterday, and they were looking for solutions. But when you think about a wall failure, you probably have your own examples in mind. So total failure of a collapse, you know, walls that are about to fail, <laughs> walls that should have failed but uh, are being stabilized. So walls fail for a variety of reasons. Fortunately, there's a lot of signs that you can see when a wall is about to fail, particularly with hydrostatic water pressure. The walls are moving, there's buckling, uh, there's bulging, there's cracks, the, the seams are bleeding, uh, weeds are growing out of the seams, the, uh, you know, the drainage system is blocked, there's cracks above, you know hydrostatic water, you know, water pressure is building up down below. A recent analysis of uh, MSE walls showed that of MSE wall failures, 63% related to water. Water coming in from uh, behind or water coming uh, from above or from, uh, from sides. So 63% dealt with uh, water pressure. So in designing uh, uh, or picking a geotextile filter fabric, you gotta go through, there's a lot of, uh, you know, characteristics of different fabrics. They've got the, the strength, the permeability, uh, the apparent size opening. But really it comes down to a simple question. Do you want more drainage or do you want more erosion control? If you're gonna you know, use it for a silt fence, you want to keep the silt in. So you don't want, uh, ero you want erosion control. But if it's gonna back up onto a road, then you're gonna probably choose something that will allow more drainage and it will probably allow more erosion. So what happens when you take the, uh, the geotextile filter fabric and you put it behind a wall? It gets wrapped around a, uh, a drain tile, it gets wrapped around gravel, it gets put up against the wall uh, covering the seams or covering a weep hole. And two things happen. As the fines start passing through the, uh, the fabric, they will start to clog over, over time. They'll start to go through the fabric, get stuck, and start to clog. And once that happens, then the performance degrades. Another thing that happens is if you, uh, if you put the filter fabric up against the wall and you put the you know, soil right up against it, you know, so there's intimate contact, then the fines will flow through fine. When you take it and you wrap it around something or there's uh, folds in the fabric, uh, there's, there's bends, what happens is the fines come in, they sit there and they start to create a slurry or a sludge that then gets on top of the, uh, the fabric and it's called blinding. Regardless of those two, the, the, the uh, result is the same, the performance decreases. Last year, a, uh, a study came out testing uh, three filter fabrics. It was uh, a new test. Uh, <clears throat> they were testing not only uh, how fast does the performance degrade on the filter fabrics in soil, but what happens when there's cyclic water. So instead of just a constant state of water, there's <clears throat> uh, periods of dry where they let it dry out, then there's periods of uh, intense water, then they let it dry out, and so they, they go through this cyclic process. What they found is that for all the samples, there was an immediate degradation in performance, right? As soon as the test began, 
But this dotted line here on all three of them is what happened when there were more real world circumstances where there was uh, changes in cyclic water. And those degraded uh, faster uh, the performance uh, of the filter fabric. Now what's interesting is as they started getting lower and lower in their performance, they started to, uh, to converge again at the bottom. So the, uh, the results of this test is that yes, it, it starts to degrade fairly quickly. Real world conditions make it degrade faster. And the final conclusion is more testing needs to be done. But uh, when, when you bury the filter fabric behind the wall, um, <clears throat> it's going to start clogging. So what happens? Well, that drainage and erosion control balance that you wanted in the beginning, it's not sustainable. So when, it's, when it starts to degrade, what happens is the filter fabric gets clogged, hydrostatic pressure builds up, the water looks for the, the easiest way out, which could be pushing through a seam, it could even be pushing through the clogged drainage, the filter fabric. And when that happens, then soil erodes. I've talked to contractors and they say, oh, we don't have any drainage issues. We just, you know, every once in a while we have to clean out the, the soil that's, uh, you know, at the end of the, the drain pipes. Well, that's the soil that's coming through the filter fabric and creating voids behind the wall. When this happens, you have to bring in, if you want to fix it, you've got to excavate. You have to bring in a backhoe, rip up the, the uh, surface, excavate, rip up the drain, reinstall it, rebuild whatever the inf infrastructure was. So what if you could do that with a wrench instead of a backhoe? So the, uh, the concept of the maintainable drain is to uh, take the geotextile textile filter fabric and make it maintainable. Now, filter fabric's never been, been thought of as a maintainable. It's usually disposable for most applications. But if, uh, if instead of just so instead of just drainage and erosion control, you brought the concept of maintainability into it. So a maintainable drain has a few characteristics. One, it's installed from the front of the wall, either a new wall or retrofit. There's no excavation, and the geotextile filter fabric is accessible through the front of the wall, typically in some sort of cartridge that can be removed, cleaned, and then reinstalled. And when it's uh, certain types of, uh, of maintainable drains will actually improve drainage performance uh, in certain circumstances, which we'll talk about in a minute. A Couple of uh, examples of maintainable drains. Um, these examples are, uh, are, are cone-shaped filters that slide into, uh, into a weep hole. Inside is the uh, geotextile filter fabric. It slides into a maintainable position and it's bolted to the, uh, to the surface of the retaining wall, the bridge abutment, the seawall. Another example is a uh, hydrohelical. What this is, is a, uh, it's a helical similar to what you'd use as a tieback. It has the same structural properties, uh, but it has uh, holes in it and inside is a well point uh, type screen, PVC screening. And it can uh, be you know, uh, drilled into the soil as far back as the soil will allow. What this does is with the uh, maintainable drain at the front, it will drain the, uh, the pressure off the front of the wall and it will also take the, uh, the water that is the future pressure on the wall and bring it out and out of the, uh, the weep hole. The uh, University of uh, Missouri did some testing on the, uh, the maintainable drains. What they did is they, uh, they created some boxes and filled it with different types of soil. They had uh, you know, four foot uh, water surface. Then they had uh, piezometers and tensometers uh, built in and they had drains that they tested different drains in different soils. And what they had uh, anticipated was that the phreatic surface would be approximately here at the front of the wall. You see it dips down at the drain, it goes down towards the front as it get closer to the drain. But what they found is that about two feet back, the phreatic surface 
quickly drops off, and by the time it gets to the drain, the sporadic surface is parallel to the bottom of the drain. And from the front view, you can see it dipping down as the water that is against the wall to the sides is pulled down and out the drain. So from that, they, uh, they deduced two, two things. One, they had uh, done an estimate of, well, compared to uh, just the geotextile filter fabric, uh, the, the one they were testing against and what its flow rate is, what would the flow rate be for the different drains uh, in similar unblocked circumstance? So if they were going to compare a weep hole, a six inch size weep hole, a four inch size weep hole, a two and a half size weep hole, and the surface area, and the surface area of the cone-shaped filter that penetrates into uh, the backfill, there's more surface area. So what did they anticipate the, uh, the improvement would be? And it was quite, they anticipated quite a big uh, improvement, with, except for the, the smaller version. But what they found in the physical world is there was actually a significant uh, drawdown uh, gallons per minute than a same, similar sized weep hole. And the reason being is because of the surface area and the cone shape. So they then took it another step further and said, well, based on you know, this kind of testing, what would the, the spacing be for a filter? And what they, uh, they deduced from the study is that in line with the filter, the water pressure, the, the pressure head goes down to zero, but between two filters, then the pressure increases. So if you have the, the filters, you know, five to 10 feet apart, you see that uh, there's zero pressure in line with the filters, and there's some pressure, uh, you know, beginning between the filters. And as soon as you start uh, putting them further apart, the, uh, the pressure goes up significantly. So depending on a wall construction, you know, typically you would, uh, you'd want to put a filter like this at the weakest point. So on a, on a concrete wall, probably at the seam, because you want this filter to be the weakest point, uh, and the water pressure at the seam to be you know, as close to zero as possible. And then between the filters, where the, uh, you know, the, the concrete slab is, the, it can handle that pressure. So maintainable drains uh, are used in a number of applications. Seawalls, uh, you know, bridge abutments, um, even uh, concrete, concrete uh, detention basins, um, parking garages, and a, a number of different uh, types of material. The uh, the nice thing about the uh, this type of drain is it installs in about 15 minutes. If you have a weep hole already, you can slide it in, bolt it in, and it's done. If you have to core a hole, that'll take a little bit longer. You core a hole through the wall, slide it in, and it's done. Now, the, the thing about the filter is it's maintainable. So you do need to, uh, every few years, depending on soil hydrology, check it, take it out, clean it off with a brush, and put it back in. So it's simple. It's cost effective, it's simple, and it will drain the pressure off the wall. So it can be, uh, you know, if you've got walls that, uh, you know, are showing signs of distress, for not a lot of money, you can install these and extend the life of, uh, of those walls. Skyline Steel took the uh, results of the Missouri study and, uh, you know, they did some calculations when they uh, spec in, in jobs when they're working with, uh, with their customers. And what they, uh, they came up with is, you know, they had their standard assumptions of a certain type of wall. This happened to be a, uh, you know, a seawall. And if they were going to do, you know, traditional drainage, they would spec it out to be able to handle, uh, you know, it, it has drainage, but do you, do you spec it out at 100% you know, when it's uh, brand new? Or do you spec it out after the uh, performance has decreased? Well, they would spec it out uh, as the performance has decreased, and they would, uh, they would have it about $900 per linear foot. Using the same criteria and uh, the maintainable drains, they would spec it out, the same thing, at $475 per linear foot. So that's about a $500 per linear foot savings 
on the steel sheet pile for, you know, at, at this rate, you could put one, in there, one of these in every linear foot and still save money. But you only have to put them in every, you know, five to 10 feet. So where have these been used? Well, the most uh, famous one is the George Washington Memorial Parkway. And it's the most famous because it got all the TV press. What happened was uh, in the middle of the night, sinkhole opened up, four cars got in an accident. They came out to investigate, and what did they find? Down below their drainage system, underneath all of their drains was all the soil. So the filter fabric had broken through at some point, probably been you know, going out slowly for a while, and at some event, all the voids uh, collapsed and the sinkhole came in. You see, this looks like it's the soil line, but it's not. This is the mound of soil. The soil line's actually down here, and after they installed the filters uh, and cleaned it up, you, can, you, know, you don't see the actual soil line, but there was a lot of soil under there, 30 foot uh, deep sinkhole, five by 10, so a lot of soil. Now, Natchez Trace Parkway, uh, they're taking a different approach. They've got 400 overpasses. Um, they have 440 miles long. They're spending their money, the big chunk of their money, on the walls that really need help. But every year, they're going through and they're installing uh, the maintainable drains. You know, they've got a multi-year project. They're doing a bunch every year. And they're going through, and the ones that need some repair but can have the drain, they can put it in very quickly, and they get uh, you know, 10, 15, 20 more years of life out of the, that wall. I like this example, uh, the Missouri Department of Transportation. They had a, a very tall retaining wall here. Uh, the roadway's up here. The uh, exit, you know, cars are down here. And uh, it's showing very uh, significant signs of distress. And one of the pictures I showed in the beginning of the, uh, of the, the uh, raw, um, all the uh, panels out of place, that's at the end of this, uh, this wall here. But what they did after they installed the filters is they put uh, a yellow dye down through along the roadway and tested to see all the drain, you know, how fast did it take for the yellow dye to start coming out and were all the, the drains working. So for, for some DOTs, this is, this is new. Other DOTs have been using them for, for a number of years. Uh, this map uh, is accurate, except uh, Caltrans should, uh, should be on it. Just uh, a few other examples. Uh, Illinois, I'm showing this because uh, what they've done is they're, uh, they're welding the units to the steel sheet pile instead of bolting them in. Some, uh, some contractors, uh, just engineers like that. Michigan uses these in their maintenance projects. So they, uh, they go through, and uh, this happens to be in a creek bed underneath, uh, you know, underneath the road. And uh, they have uh, unusual sized weep holes. So they uh, install adapter plates over the weep holes to, uh, <clears throat> so this is a four inch weep hole on, uh, I think it's about a, sorry, it's a four inch drain on about a six inch uh, weep hole that existed. Uh, Nebraska has been using them. This uh, happens to be a slope stabilization. It's uh, you know, quite a ways down here, and the, the filters run all along the bottom of the steel sheet pile the whole, the whole way. Colorado, a, a couple of examples uh, under, uh, under steel sheet pile bridge abutment, uh, a new construction, existing construction for uh, concrete abutment. A couple of international uh, projects. Uh, kind of hard to tell, but this is a huge tunnel. And they've got uh, equipment they're using to, uh, you know, to uh, you know, build the tunnel. And this right here happens to be a very large retaining wall that uh, they have at the entrance to the tunnel. And uh, you cannot see them here, but they've got uh, you know, drains installed all the way uh, along this retaining wall. Uh, Canada, using it on MSE walls. Uh, we talked yesterday about, uh, you know, <clears throat> the failures of MSE walls with uh, the straps and the corrosion. Well, one of the things, if, uh, if the water drains faster 
through the, uh, behind the MSC walls, then it should uh, help with the corrosion issue and make those last longer, if you're able to get the water out faster. Uh, Army Corps of Engineers, uh, they use these in, in their projects. Uh, this happens to be, uh, they're expanding the, the channel for the Santa Ana River uh, significantly, and they're building retaining walls all the way along certain sections. Um, the, they use a, a very large version of the filter that uh, actually they, uh, they asked for a larger version of, of the uh, maintainable drains. So this was uh, designed especially for the Army Corps of Engineers, uh, large ports, uh, large retaining walls uh, that have significant drainage uh, concerns also use the, the large ones. The uh, Department of Agriculture uh, on some of the, uh, this happens to be an irrigation canal, the, stain, the uh, steel sheet pile, they're uh, installed all the way along the, uh, the sheet pile uh, along the canal. Uh, last example, one of the last, uh, this is in the villages, and uh, it's actually a golf, uh, golf path. But what they were having is uh, all of their, uh, their walls were having significant problems with the stucco and the paint, and they were, have, they were spending a lot of time maintaining the aesthetics of the wall. Well, they wanted to, uh, to get rid of all of that, seal up the walls, and then put more uh, you know, stucco and, and paint on it. But what happens when they seal a wall? So, like a seawall, when, when you seal up the wall, where's the water going to go? If it's not coming through the wall, like it had been, where is it going to go? Well, they needed to, uh, to give it a place to go. So on all of their uh, tunnels, they've installed uh, you know, uh, maintainable drains to allow the water to uh, come out. And since then, they have not had any problems with, uh, with moisture coming through the walls. Given yesterday's uh, discussion, I just wanted to, uh, I added this slide. Um, <clears throat> you know, we talk about the different types of walls. Well, this is a, a block wall, and it's, uh, it's actually quite long, but uh, it's, it's fairly old, and uh, they were doing repairs, and they, in, they installed the drains uh, because it was starting to show signs of weakness. So their goal is they can extend the life of this wall uh, by in giving it better, uh, better high, uh, water drainage. This wall here, uh, you can see back here, the whole thing collapsed from here forward, and they had to rebuild it, and then they, put the, <laughs> they then put the drains in all the way along the, uh, the wall. This one is a Skyline Steel Project, a bridge repair in Wyoming. Um, it's kind of like the, um, the metal bin uh, designs that I, I saw yesterday in the retaining wall presentation, uh, although this is, uh, this is brand new, and they've installed the uh, the maintainable drains in all of the bins, on all of the, uh, the recessed areas here. So while uh, maintainable drains might be new to some of you, uh, it's actually, they've been around for a while in the seawall industry. Uh, the number of Department of Transportations have used them, so maybe some of your uh, agencies have. Uh, a number of uh, municipalities, uh, counties and a, a number of uh, private uh, enterprises. So, although it's new, over 130,000 of them have been installed worldwide. So, in five, 16 countries, 41 states uh, had installations. And if you include uh, the uh, federal highway and the federal lands uh, installations, uh, there's uh, you know a few more states that they've been installed in. Any questions? New weep holes uh, in new uh, retaining walls. Uh, those walls are often, uh, you know, quite thick. Uh, depending, you know, at the base of the wall with batter and everything, they might be two or three feet thick. Mm -hmm. uh, does that mean that you have a, a narrow hole going all the way back through the, to the back side of the wall, and this just mounts to the very front? Uh, and and that canister that you have there, that cartridge, uh, is only going. 8, 10, 12 inches in. Mm -hmm. What's happening with the rest of the hole? Are you filling up with whatever the backfill material is? And how do you, how do you treat that in a new wall so that you're not getting some kind of a clogging in the weep hole itself? Right. That's a great question. 
So there, there are applications where the wall is quite thick. And when the wall is thick, it's not going to penetrate fully into the, the backfill. There's going to be the, the cord out hole here. So if it's a, a retrofit, you know, it, if, you, if you've got a, a very thick wall and then you, it tapers off at all, you may put it further up so it's, it doesn't go through as, as, uh, as far. But you do want to make sure that whatever level of water that you want to drain, that it's down to here. So if you want the water to drain all the way, you need to put it you know, close to the bottom. So if it's a retrofit, uh, what we recommend, you don't necessarily know what's behind there, uh, but you have to core all the way through, probably pack some 57 stone. Uh, if you can, core out some of the soil, pack some stone in, uh, pack some sand in would be a good, uh, good idea. If this is uh, in the backfill, then uh, you don't necessarily, you don't have to have uh, stone around it. It will function right at the soil. But when you've got a, a long pipe, you should try and put some, uh, you know, it's a flowable material back as far as you can. You have to get far enough to go through the previous uh, filter fabric. Filter fabric. So if that filter fabric is not right at the end of the wall, edge of the back side of the wall, you need to go a little bit further. So what he was saying is, if you, if you didn't hear, is that when, you, when you're coring back, you want to be able to uh, core back through the, if there's any existing filter fabric that could be clogged, you want to core through that. Sorry, just for new installations, uh, mm -hmm. and how you treat that, that big stretch of pipe or hole that is, is new, uh, do, you, do, you, do you backfill uh, initially with stone in there uh, as you begin to backfill the new wall as you're constructing it? Yes, with, if it's new construction, you do want to uh, you know, build it with a uh, flowable material behind. Uh, regardless of how, how long the hole is, even if it's uh, short and it's going into the backfill, it's best practice to, uh, to put a flowable material around it. Now, what you don't want to do is, you know, if you put, let's say, 57 stone around it, you don't want to wrap that in uh, geotextile filter fabric. Because what happens when you, when you wrap it, you're never going to get a, a good um, intimate contact between the, the, what you've wrapped and it's kind of bent and everything, and then you put the uh, the soil around it, so it's going to blind. Yes, uh, I'm curious. Uh, what materials are these? Uh, uh, kind of stainless steel? Uh, what are the durability of, of, yeah. of, of the drain itself? Right. So it comes in, uh, in, in different models. This happens to be 3 16 stainless steel uh, for corrosive environments. Uh, that also comes in powder coated uh, for other applications. Uh, the, uh, this is an ABS. Uh, UV protected, it's, uh, it's uh, strong ABS, and then the geotextile filter fabric, this happens to be uh, uh, Mirafi's FW300, which is a woven material, and it's what most of our uh, customers use. Uh, it is, from our uh, testing, the best balance between erosion control, drainage, and maintainability. It can, you know, come in any kind of filter fabric you want. Uh, we've put in uh, you know, non-woven fabrics, but the understanding is for, for those are going to clog faster and they'll need more frequent maintenance. What about situations where you don't want the cha channel water to go be behind the back wall? You want one-way flow? Great question. So well, I brought here the, uh, an open-end unit. So it uh, just has the crosshairs and it was, uh, you know, it's used mostly for inland applications. Uh, as I showed on one of the previous slides, which... So this is the open-end unit that I'm holding up here. Then there's the closed-end uh, unit, which has the, uh, a one-way valve that is attached to the front here. And when water comes up or a storm surge, it seats against the, uh, the ribbing so that water doesn't go back behind the wall. And so this, is, uh, this was first developed for uh, the city of Fort Lauderdale, who. Uh, implemented a new seawall ordinance that no water can penetrate back through a seawall or through any drainage from the, the uh, water side. So we came up with, uh, <clears throat> with the, the one-way valve. This happens to have a, a, a louver vent cover on it, sta uh, 316 stainless steel. Uh, it's designed to protect the valve, but also it's, uh, it's designed for vermin control. It can also be put on, on top of the, uh, the open-end unit 
uh, you know, because it, it, uh, it's small enough that, uh, you know, mice can't get in or others. Hopefully you found this, uh, this interesting and can take it away and, and use it in uh, your agency. Uh, the preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.